Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode six of Bass Tunes. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff today, and I hope you enjoy the uh, interesting musical taste in the background. We got ourselves emailed by 60% H. I can't say the full name, but... <laughs> I'm going to turn this down a bit, but I am going to have this on air. Long story short, we got ourselves some 20th, 21st century humor on air. (laughs) Pardon me. (laughs) Well, something came in my throat there. I don't know what that was. So, if you followed my Instagram, I didn't really promote this that much, but I thought that episode 6 was going to be about the Draco tape. 60% H is a Instagram irony account, and apparently this guy was the owner of several irony accounts on Instagram. I like, ironic meme pages, where it's like, it's not even funny anymore. I would just straight up classify that as anti-humor. Now, anti-humor, let me, let's get that definition up there. You know how we do it. Anti-humor is like a type of direct and alternative humor, indirect, that involves the joke tellers delivering something that is intentionally not funny or lacking in intrinsic meaning. It's sort of like the audience expects something to be funny and then nothing happens. Unobvious punchlines is... It's like, here's, we got 21 anti-jokes, and I don't know why I'm on this topic right here, but we're trying to, trying to delve into the irony culture that I honestly would attribute to Generation Z. Generation Z, well, I mean, it's America, so Z. Obviously, I'm part of that generation, right? I was born in 2003. I'm a young man. I'm a young lad. I'm an adult now, but I'm still a little lad, right? But... <clears throat> I I grew up firsthand with the internet, and I think that's the biggest thing that really shaped Gen Z's sense of humor. When it, we're, we're we're at a thing called post irony now, which I find really funny. So, oh by the way, my laptop's battery is almost lo- dead. So, if at any point whatever I'm playing in the background cuts out, that's why. Right now, I'm not playing anything. Post-irony is sort of this state where earnest and ironic intents become muddled. But it's also sort of like, the the way I can describe it is this. Another definition, you know, we're going to use Urban Dictionary here. I know I'm just pulling up definitions, just reading them out loud, but I find this interesting. It's like when something's, when an ironic appreciation of something becomes genuine, usually, apparently, this is from actually 2010, so it's been around for a while in this context, Due to either prolonged exposure or the enjoyment derived from how amusingly terrible it is. It's like, at first I thought Pitchfork's inclusion of Kelly Clarkson's Since You have Been Gone at number 21 on their top 500 tracks of the 2000s list was just hipster irony. Because of course, you know, Pitchfork is the hipster website of the millennia. But, it's like saying, but now real hipsters post-ironically recognize it for the great song that it is. An unintentional response to Generation X's use of sarcasm, a post-ironic comment, is one in which the speaker actually says what they feel, but with a sarcastic tone. And the one thing that comes to mind when I'm talking about that is the, I believe, one of the double-digit season episodes of South Park called Sarcastaball. Essentially, you know, Randy Marsh, who, interestingly, with South Park, I really feel like the one thing I kind of, part of what I think made South Park eventually kind of lose a little bit of steam. Now, I think compared to the other animated shows that are still on the air that are, you know, where it's contemporaries, I really do think that South Park, if anything, really did just go off like that. I really do think that South Park, of anything, really did have the best longevity and have the best staying power, but it it shifted over from the boys over to Randy, which is the father of, like, one of the lead kids, and I'm only saying this because a lot of that show and a lot of these types of shows are this form of 
satire, you know, you're poking fun and you're sort of like taking realism and you're taking like a real scenario and you're sort of just like maybe over exaggerating it, sort of putting a similar scenario like that into the world of your whatever sort of creative endeavor you're doing, whether that's a television show, podcast, or I'm usually like some sort of some sort of fictional writing, right? And that's the thing. We have something it's like taking that stuff and putting it into their world so you can sort of point a finger out and say, "Wow, this is weird." And I guess in the context of South Park, uh, the creators, Trey Parker and Matt Snow, you know, they're dads now. They got kids. They've gotten a lot older since this show went on air. I mean, what season are we on? We're on 25. It's absurd. There's so much time spent. And they're probably just going to keep running it down the clock. Like, I thought they'd be done by now, but no, they just signed a massive deal with Paramount. So they're going to have, like, a bunch of new TV specials on Paramount+. Plus. Although, I will say, they did say that there'd be four TV specials, and they already did two of them with the post-COVID specials because they were sort of treated as separate specials because they're called, it's post-COVID and post-COVID, the return of COVID. And, of course, the whole thing with that is that the boys are now men and you know i find that really interesting because the voice of parker and stone it was always just their voice pitched up but now it's something totally different we're gonna have a little bit more 60 on here (laughs) real thug music right here real trap and the whole the whole point of what i was talking about today is of course 60 percent h which, if you can hear this in the background right now, which I'm sure you can, it's absurdist. It's like a trap producer just defecating on the floor. And for some reason now we have, like, Middle Eastern, and then it just cuts out. And it's like, what I find really interesting about that, and another example I'll give for that sort of ironic beat, which is the main topic of this episode is it's an interesting way to say that you say yes that's an interesting way to say that that's interesting oh wait i just realized my sms text message popped up on there my bad y'all we out here using the macintosh because we love a macintosh that can text that's like half the reason why i love having a macbook honestly just so I can text on there. And I'm well aware that Windows has a similar thing with your phone and like Samsung stuff, especially because they have a really good integration with Microsoft with their Windows products. But like, listen to me, dude. I'd be rocking that Sammy. You know how we do it out here. But we're going to go ahead and pull up an interesting beat. And we're going to, I'm going to talk about this while we listen to this. Worst, the worst beat ever created series by a British YouTuber known as Distant Cry. I find these immensely interesting because, again, it's something really similar. I just dropped something. It's like taking a beat and just intentionally making something really low quality. And it's like that meme where it's like that little kid is like, yo, I'm a a new producer. I'm from Atlanta. Like, I'm a 15-year-old man just trying trying to make it. And then you just make it and it just sounds like this. And obviously, you know, you're listening to this right now and you're like, what on earth is this? And I feel the same way. What I love about these beats, especially, is that there's a lot of things that you can you can take from it. There's a lot of irony put into every little aspect of it. There's like all these little references. I think a good example is beat number three. So we have like this, like, we have this, like, (laughs) we have this, like, really terrible piano lick, right? You have drums that are totally off sync. You got a, you got a monkey for whatever reason. You have, like, Soldier Boy cranked at, like, steel drums straight out of FL Studio. You have, like, those, like, standard, it's like this sort of nostalgic hearkening back to, like, the days of, 
2007 ringtone rapping. Man, I legitimately think I lost viewers when I put on these worst beats. I don't care. It's episode 6. We're going dummy because it's post midterm season. I can do what I want. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. This is amazing. We're really out here. We're really out here. We're really out here today. Oh my. Actually, I'm going to put that one on. Some of these have like beat tags that, you know, aren't very positive. And by positive, I mean. Bad words. I think this one's good. We got worst beat ever number 10. This one has 2.6 million views of the videos. I think my favorite part about this beat is this is the is the eclectic sampling of a a a, a, a cell phone vibrating. And that's what I really find interesting. It's like it's a phone vibrating. It's like the sound that's ingrained in our heads nowadays because we're so used to our cell phones being like this integral part, like a new part of our body, you know what I mean? And of course you have you have the 216.mp3 sound. I'll play that for you too. That's another like worst beat ever created. That's one of the classic ones. That's like the big one. TJ on. Essentially Omnisphere is a production sort of like instrument piece of software and there's like this really terrible accordion and y'all know how we doing it right <laughs> absurdist nature dude but there's a rhythm and that's my favorite part about these beats honestly outside of the sheer nature of like just taking an instrumental and absolutely like just ruining it just absolutely ruining it you also have this beautiful 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 idea of this there's legitimate effort and ideas put into this like there's legitimate ideas and beat ideas in this one too which is the name of which i cannot say on air you have like 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 steel drums and then there's, there's like intentionally there's intentional everything which is why i love this everything is intentionally horrendous everything on these things <laughs> okay let me just uh like we got this right and then you, you, you just have like the base of a good beat and then you have just a sharp, piercing, loud sound. You have something that either toys with the mixing or the instrument choices or choices in rhythm. And it's like every little bit. And it's, there's a talent here that's like being intentionally thrown out. Here's another one too. This one I was considering playing last episode due to the uh, scuffed nature of that episode being an impromptu hour long session. Thankfully, I don't have to do a full hour. I had the opportunity to actually, but I decided not to because frankly, I don't know if I could fill that time up again. I don't have the the people who I had on air, you know, they wouldn't have been able to make it this time today and it just wouldn't work, right? And I just this it's so hard to talk for that long. Like I'll put burgers on for my favorite Hopefully it's coming up on air. Right? And then you got... <laughs> so you essentially have a legitimately good beat that is tarnished by the advent of a Samsung Galaxy notification sound, which is another, like, ironic meme. It's... 
you have like this like you've had we've had this resurgence of 21st century humor now i keep saying 21st century humor what is that you have like cartoon sound effects so you know we have the cartoon slip and fall sound effect and it's like these sort of ironic uses of sound effects flashes of loud noises and i feel like if anything you're sort of catering to the nostalgia the of Honestly, I'd say Generation Z, a lot of it's actually from the, you know, the indie game horror franchise, Five Nights at Freddy's, which I grew up on, of course, and I hold it, it holds a special place in my heart, but like, you know. Like, these sound effects literally just, like, immediately pull you in. You hear the sound, and your brain neuron activates, and you just, like... I don't know if I do, but I have this, like, instinctual urge just to laugh. You know what I mean? You s <laughs> that was an accident. You have an instinctual urge just to laugh and be like, what on earth is this? Because it's so stupid. And then we also have stuff like Mason Troy Adams. I can't... It's like... There's... It's like the, our sense of humor... Has, has has gone off a cliff. And obviously, people are like, oh, my sense of humor is so scuffed. And maybe it's not all the time. And <laughs> But I sincerely feel that at times. You know what I mean? I really feel that just pure... That pure... Degrading. It's like... We just... I feel like a lot of, like, the culture's sense of humor has just simplified over the years. I think is the best way to describe it. It's simplification. Our sense of humor is just so... We're going back to basics. It's like we're sort of looking at ironic stuff and corny stuff, and we're embracing it, you know? And it's just, like, stupid stuff that, honestly, any any demographic anywhere will always have a soft spot for, like, fart noises and stupid stuff like that. Because, you know, everybody deep down has that nine-year-old child sense of humor deep down. Like, <laughs> he made the poopy. You know what I mean? Like, that's just how we do it. People still do that. And these, like, Quandale Dingle goofy awe videos where it's like, hey, guys, Quandale Dingle here. I just, you know random noises and stupid stuff right <laughs> and usually just like really just dumb stuff and then you have johnny depp here you have hey guys johnny depp here and it's like literally johnny depp like like we're, we're going back to regular pop culture our trial the trial of you know the defamation trial that johnny depp is putting against his former i don't know if they were married or something her former, his former lover, Amber Heard, right? It's crazy. It's actually crazy. Everything is being referenced. And I just, like, that sound effect makes me laugh. It's literally just a phone ring. I mean, obviously there's a reason to it, and it's, 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 it's bred from nostalgia, you know what I mean? Of course, it's just bred from nostalgia, but Morbius, but I don't know. I, th I, I do think there's been the inkling of this sort of humor for a good while now. My battery's at two. You are currently listening to KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. You're listening to bass tunes. Our current meter reading is 200 watts, and this will be the ending of the recording. So thank you all for listening now.